Imagine a country where tens of thousands of workers have been stripped of their democratic right to strike, where a trade union is slapped with six-figure fines for standing up for the rights of its members, and their leaders threatened with imprisonment, where it's a criminal offence even to induce a member to take industrial action, and where successive governments have shamelessly taken full advantage of that grossly unfair industrial power imbalance to impose pay freezes and real terms pay cuts, to allow staffing levels to reach dangerously low levels, and raises retirement to an unrealistic and cruel age of 68. It's unthinkable, isn't it? Well, sit down because it's happening in this country right now. 30 long years, we have been subject to section 127 of the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act of 1994. This year marks 30 years since prison officers in the UK were banned from taking any form of industrial action. Just think about that. Meanwhile, violence against prison officers is soaring. It's widely acknowledged, even across Parliament, that successive governments have unfairly used the draconian ban on taking any form of industrial action to exploit our hard-working prison officers who have no effective way to fight back against their poor pay, punishing terms of service and workplace conditions that should be completely unacceptable in a civilized society. The latest government figures show prison officers were attacked more than eight and a half thousand times over the past year. That works out at 23 attacks per day, and it's an increase of 16% on the previous 12-month period. If you actually take the figures that go back as far as 2010, actually assaults on prison officers have increased by 190%. And serious assaults have increased by 145%. Section 127 has directly contributed to many of the crises currently plaguing the prison service as the lack of any industrial muscle to protect pay and terms and conditions from sustained assault has led to rock bottom morale and retention of prison officers, whilst experience plummets and violence soars. I want to see uh, a system put in place uh, where safety comes first for my members because it's certainly not happening at the moment and I have seen and my union has seen horrendous life-changing um, experiences of prison officers through dreadful assaults that sadly the children and the partners get to see when they come home. No worker should ever have to suffer that. It's shocking. And whilst that happens, the Prison Officers Association has been faced with this. He threatened us with imprisonment. I walked the membership out in 2018 because I was fed up with them getting used as human punch bags with no workplace protections. And he threatened us with imprisonment, me and the General Secretary. This is absolutely no place in a civilised democratic society. And what you might not know is that the Scottish government formally restored the right of prison officers to strike almost a decade ago. I spoke with Steve Gillen, General Secretary of the Prison Officers Association, and asked him about the impact of that. Section 127 was repealed in Scotland almost a decade ago. What was the impact of that? Nil. The sky didn't cave in when it was repealed in Scotland. And our argument is very simple. If you can repeal it, if the Scottish government can repeal it in Scotland, surely the Westminster government can do the same. And trust us as a respectable trade union to deal with things on an equal basis with an employer. Because at the moment, the employer has the upper hand because they don't have to actually negotiate on a collective bargaining basis with us for the simple reason they just rely on this antiquated legislation, which is a breach of international law. The sky didn't fall in. And let's not forget that without trade unions and the workers both willing and able to back them with strike action when needed, we wouldn't have a minimum wage, maternity and paternity rights, pension provision, holiday and sickness entitlements, victories which have benefited every single person in this country. The new Labour government was elected on a promise to repeal Tory anti-trade union laws 
including the disgraceful minimum service levels legislation. But what about our prison officers? Prisons aren't safe, uh, Nick. Uh, they're not safe for my members. The official stats will tell you that. My members uh, are assaulted every single day of the week. The democratic right to strike should be universal. If a government is allowed to just take it away from different sections of the workforce when it pleases, as the Tories try to do with our teachers and our doctors and our nurses, then ultimately no worker has rights, just privileges that can be taken away by people in power whenever they want. That's why I'm joining the Prison Officers Association in calling on the new Labour government for prison officers to be given back their basic industrial rights. Just as the Scottish government formally restored the right of prison officers to strike almost a decade ago, it's the only right, fair and just thing to do. I'll be standing shoulder to shoulder with them, and I hope you will too.